So this question is, again, a formula application question. You are given the momentum, and then it's asking for velocity. Now, one thing I might suggest, which uh, it's not suggested here. So when you look at the expression for relativistic, um, um, relativistic expression for momentum, it has a bit of a complexity in it because relativistic momentum is equal to gamma mv. That's how it's usually written and usually how people remember, that's how I remember it. And the thing that's the most uh, um, misleading here is that both the gamma and v, they basically depend on one parameter. So gamma is a function of v and uh, so it, so that's why um, you have basically one equation, uh, one unknown, instead of there being two unknowns. And you should be able to solve for these things. And the thing that trips up people is the complexity in the algebra. So I think because it's asking for the velocity, it's kind of easy to just to write down this, you know, mv mass times the speed divided by the expanded out version of the expression for gamma, which should be square root of one minus v squared over c squared. And um, this is simple enough that you can actually work through this expression and solve for v. I think that's doable, um, perfectly fine. What I would want to, what I would encourage you to try out is try out expressing v in terms of gamma because there's a really nice relationship between gamma and V. So um, using the symbol beta, which I introduced to keep stop writing down C all the time, in terms of beta, gamma is equal to one over square root of one minus beta squared. And when you invert this relationship and solve for beta, then what you get is actually pretty simple. Beta is equal to square root of one minus one over gamma squared. Well, maybe it doesn't appear simple now, but when you plug this in for V, so you know V is beta C, when you plug this in for V, you will see the simplification because what you get is gamma times M times beta square root of one minus one over gamma squared times C. And when you absorb gamma into this square root, that's where you will see the simplification. M times C, M and C. And then gamma going inside the square root becomes a squared. So gamma squared, gamma squared times one minus gamma squared times one over gamma squared becomes one. That's the simplification. So when you have this expression, you are, you are given what the momentum is. Um, it's a, maybe slightly simpler algebraically to solve for gamma. And once you solve for gamma, then you can figure out beta from this expression again. So, so this particular question, it's simple enough. You can do it either this way or this way. Either way, the amount of time it takes to get to the answer, it won't be that big of a difference. Now, this difference matters when you have more algebraically complicated expressions, which you might get to later in the problem set. So, but you know, this is uh, this easy question is a good practice to start. Pre uh, good place to start practicing uh, what using this expression would look like in terms of uh, relativity problem solving. Um, and I think uh, it's uh, good to start developing a number sense for gamma, how gamma changes for. Uh, so you know, here it says uh, this instruction because really with the special relativity, as v gets closer and closer to c the sense of precision that's expressed in the velocity and the actual uh, real precision within the number is, is it becomes very different. Um, and at these high speed limits, gamma actually becomes a better number to specify accurate speed with a fewer number of initial uh, significant figures. <laughs>